Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Cube Studios here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the Cube and uh, co-founder of Silicon Angle Media Inc. Joined here with Tom Joyce, Cube alumni. Uh, some big news: new role as a CEO of Pensa. Um, welcome back to the Cube. You've been uh, kind of freelancing out there as an uh, entrepreneur in residence, CEO in residence. Uh, you've been on the Cube commentating. Great to see you. Good to see you too. Thanks for having me back. You know, <laughs> fully employed. Congratulations. Uh, you know, finding where you land is really critical. I talked to a lot of friends. Like, you know, they want to get a good fit um, in, in a gig. They want to have a good team to work with. It's, it's a cultural issue, but it's also you want to sink your teeth into something good. So you found. Pensa, mm -hmm. you're the CEO now of the company, and you got some news which we'll get to in a minute, uh, but you know, what's going on? Why, why the change? Why these guys? You know, I, last time we talked, last time I was in here, I was running a consulting business, and I, and I did that for almost a year, so that I could look at a lot of options and you know, kind of reset my understanding of where the industry is and where the problems are, and it was, it was good to do that. You know, these were some of the best people that I met, um, and I got interested in what they were doing. They're smart, technical people. I, I wanted to work with them. Uh, it was a good fit in terms of skills, because when I, when I joined Pensa uh, just a couple of months ago now, uh, they were all technical people, and they'd been heads down developing core technology and some early product stuff for uh, almost three years. So, you know, they needed somebody like me to come <laughs> in and uh, help them get to the next level, and it was a really good fit. And the other thing is, frankly, in my last job, I was running an IT shop, and I also had, had about a thousand people out there selling and about 300 pre sales mm -hmm. people. And I saw, when I saw this, I saw a product that I could have used in both of those areas. And mm -hmm. so sometimes when you resonate with something like that, um, you start to think, well, geez, this is something that I could, a lot of people are going to need. And so uh, there are many aspects of the technology that are interesting, but ultimately, I saw that this is a useful thing that I could I could yeah. go make a big, big business out of. So that's you've had a great it. career. You know, we know each other going way back. Yeah. In EMC days, and certainly at HP, even you know um, during the the corporate developments work that Meg Whitman was doing at HP, you've been involved in a lot of M and A activities. Yes. Yep. So you've seen the landscape. You are talking to the VCs and all the all the, all the conversations. We've talked about that in the past on other interviews. You can check it out on YouTube. Tom Joyce, mm -hmm. if you're interested in checking those conversations, that worth worth looking at. Um, so you'd land at Pensa. What, what do they do? What, what, was, what was the itch for you? What was, uh, why are they relevant? What are they doing? Well, the first thing is the company was founded about three years ago by people that had hardcore experience in big networking and virtualization environments. And you know, they've been tackling some of the hardest problems in, in virtual infrastructure as you move from the hardware to uh, everything being virtualized on multiple clouds, these guys were tackling the scale problem. And they'd also drilled down into how to make this work in the largest network environments in the world. So they had gotten business out of one of the largest service providers in the world um, as, as their first customer. So you know, you, you look at that and you say, all right, these are smart people and they're focusing on hard problems and there's a lot of, a lot of longevity in, in the technology that they're going out and building. And, and basically what they're trying to do is help customers go to the next level with all software based or software defined if you will infrastructure so that you can take technology from a whole bunch of different sources. It's going to be VMware, OpenStack, DevOps tech, the DevOps stack, as well as the whole you know, constellation of people in the security industry. How do you make all those software parts work together at scale with the people that you have? Rather than going out and hiring a whole new IT staff to plug all this stuff together and hope it works, these guys wanted to solve that. So it's without a lot of expertise, this product can go design, validate that it works, build and deploy complete software defined environments and it can do it faster than you could do it any other way that, that I'm aware of and I've been around this industry for a long time. Yeah. And so that's what I saw, you know, when I, when I said, geez, you know, I could have used this before, I could have used it in my own IT, where our exposures were things like, we had all this old software that we needed to update and we we're scared to touch any of it, right? Well, you look at things like Equifax. I was exposed in the Equifax breach and that was exactly that yeah, And they had four months in there playing around. Who knows what they, what they got? Well, to be honest with you, in, in my business, we were doing the same thing because we weren't comfortable with upgrading our software because we couldn't validate that it worked. You know, how do you move from yeah. the old stuff to the VMware 6.5 and make sure nothing else breaks? Yeah. Well, we're kind of in the era of needing machine learning, intelligent technologies, autonomous kinds of ways to deploy this stuff, because mm -hmm. you can't hire enough smart people to go do it. 
And that's what I saw. Well, we'll do a breakdown or a teardown, how you want to look at it, of, of, of the company in a second. But you guys have some news. Let's get to the news. What's the big news uh, that you're sharing today? Okay, great. Well, there's a couple of key parts of it. First, we're formally launching the company. Uh, we've been heads down development, and I've been there for a few months, but the company hasn't been launched. So we're doing that. We're introducing uh, Pensa to the world, and the new website is Pensa.ai. Uh, the second thing is we've completed our Series A financing, so we've got the financing under our belt. Third thing is we've been hiring a team. We've brought in certainly me. I brought in a fellow named Jim Chappell is the VP of Marketing, longtime uh, industry guy in both large and small software companies. Um, and we're rolling out the first product. So the technology is called... In terms Mike. of shipping? Shipping yeah, product? Yeah, it's okay. going to be shipping as a SaaS offering and it's, it's available now. Uh, it's built on our technology, which is called Maestro, which is this smart machine. And the first offering is called Pencil Lab. And I can describe to you what it's used for, but it's for helping people go figure out how do I design, build, run, try new scenarios, uh, and roll out stuff that's actually going to work uh, and do it a lot faster than, than people can do with traditional. Congratulations uh, for launching the company. Congratulations on the new role. Great, great job. I'm looking forward to, to seeing it. But let's get into the, into the company, Pensa. Right. So let's just go in um, market. You guys are targeting. I'll take a minute to go into the market. What's the market? What's going on in the market? What's the trends? What's the bet in the market for you guys? You know, with an early company like this, there's always a lot of things you can do, and the battle is figuring out what is the first thing we're going to do. So I think over time, we're going to be relevant to a lot of people. Um, the first customers we're going to be focusing on are people in IT that are trying to manage complex virtualized networks. So a lot of them are people that are using VMware today. So the category out. is virtualization, cloud, it, what's the category? It's a SaaS product for design, build, run. So it's really uh, designing uh, autonomous IT uh, systems that are built on software-defined environments. So it's VMware, OpenStack, uh, the DevOps stack, and being able to kind of bring all those parts together in a way that from an operational standpoint you can deploy quickly. And the first version of the product is going to be designed for test and dev. Okay. And next year we intend to bring out production versions of it, but virtually every one of these folks has environments for test today to figure out, all right, I want to go do my up, update, my upgrade, my change. I want to try a different security policy because mm -hmm. I've got a hack happening and I want to do that fast. We're going to go after that. Uh, the other side of it is folks um, in the vendor community. So almost anybody that's selling a solution, you know, again, like me and the job that I used to have, has people out there doing proofs of concept, demos, building systems for customers. And what we can do is give you the ability to spin up complete working environments and, and do it basically like that. If you got a you know, call this afternoon to go show VMware NSX running with some customer application yeah. with some other technology from a third, we can make that all work for you and then you can tear it down and do the next one at four o'clock in the afternoon. So is it so, a VMware customer base you're targeting? I mean, it sounds like, uh, and, and clarify if I, if I don't get this right, you don't really care if it's private cloud or hybrid cloud or public cloud. We don't care. No, we don't. And there's a lot of folks in and the And VMware, VMware is it a target over. market? VMware yeah, absolutely. buyers? Yep. And we, frankly, we've had people inside of VMware working with us as the a number of the beta testers on this and demonstrating that they can spin up their own environments faster. Mm -hmm. So, that, I mean, that kind of proof point uh, is, is what we're after. But then there's a lot of folks in DevOps, right? DevOps is one of the hot targets uh, for, for our business and a lot of businesses. And what we see is folks that are focusing on the app development side of DevOps, and then they get to the point where they got to call IT and say, all right, give me a platform to run my new application on, and they get the old answers. Yeah. So a lot of these folks are looking for the ability to spin up environments very, very quickly with a lot of flexibility where they don't need to be an expert in, all right, how's the storage going to work and how do I build the network, right? So you're targeting IT and DevOps hybrid, or is it one of the other DevOps it's developers? Both. Okay, it's, so, it's both. and you don't care which clouds, so you're going to draft off the success that yeah. VMware's seeing right now yeah. with their cloud strategy Absolutely. with AWS, same I mean, model. Look, I mean, there's Software a lot Define of ways. is booming. We can help those customers figure out how do, I, how do I do vSAN faster? How do I do NSX faster? How do I set up applications that I can move to AWS faster? Yeah. It's kind of bringing. So, software defined cloud, software defined data center, all yeah. this is in your wheelhouse. This that's is what exactly you're targeting. Right. And, and that's the, the, the <laughs> opportunity and the challenge. Again, when you're doing a small company, you know, the world is your oyster, <laughs> but you have to kind of focus on the first thing first. So we're going to go in and try to help people that have, are dealing with, all right, I need to kind of update my software so that I don't have an Equifax, or I need to fix my security policies. I need an environment like today that I can use to test that, or I want to go from 
from the old VMware to the new VMware, I got to make sure it works. That's good for the customer, it's good for yep. VMware, it's good for us. And the outcome is uh, productivity for the developer. Absolutely. Okay, so let's talk about the business and the business model. So you guys raise some money, can you talk about the amount or is that confidential? Or you it's confidential it? at this point and we have some additional Bigger than 10 million, less happen. than 10 million? Uh, it's been less than 10 million. Okay. We're going to go lean and mean, <laughs> but we're set up to make the run we need to run. Okay, good. Get that, get that out of the way. Employees, how many people do you guys have? What's the, what's the strategy? We have, uh, just over 20 now, and we okay. have a, a few more folks that we're going to be adding, but uh, we're going to go you know, fairly lean from here. Okay, um, in terms of business model, you said mm -hmm. SaaS, can you just explain a little bit more about the business model and then some of the competition that you have? Yeah, this, this product was designed from day one to be a SaaS product, so we're not going to go you know, on-premise software or any you know, old, old models. We're going with a SaaS model uh, for everything we're doing now and everything we intend to do in the future. So uh, the product sits in the cloud and you can access it basically on demand. Um, we're going to make it very easy for people to get in and give this a try. You know, it's going to be simple pricing, starting at about $1,500 a month. So a little bit of low and cost entry, not freemium, so it's going to be some cost to get in, cost. right? Try before you buy, POC, wherever that goes, kind of thing, right? Yeah, it's a, see a demo, do a trial, give it a shot. And we're going to, you know, if you, if you give it an example, right? When I was at my, my last job, um, I had, again, 300 pre-sales people doing Where's this? This HP? was at Dell Software. Dell Software, yeah, okay, got it. Now it's called Quest. And they would go out and they'd use cloud-based resources to spin up you know, their demo environments. Well, I'm going to give them, and I'm calling them, by the way, <laughs> the ability to buy it for a very short amount of money and you're not committed yeah. to it forever and you can use it as much as you want. And get the ability to yeah. say, all right, let's spin up VMware, let's spin up OpenStack, let's spin up F5, Palo Alto Networks, whatever security I want, get my app running on that in a very without being an expert in all those parts. Yeah. So, so you, can stand up, can, you can stand up stuff pretty quickly, it's a DevOps ethos, yep. really, but it's about the app and the developer productivity. Right, and from a business model standpoint, it's how do I make this really, really easy? Uh, right. Because the more of those folks that use it in this phase, next year, when we get to say, all right, let's punch that thing you built into production on your cloud, um, you know, we'll be ready to go. So our, our goal is to, to Competi grab competition. Uh, space quickly. Talk about competition. Yeah, I think the competition for this part of it, the this kind of dev test lab uh, spin up uh, scenario, the pencil lab that I just described, uh, the biggest co competition is going to be people that build their own. So in the corner you got your test environment running on your old mm -hmm. hardware, right? So th that doesn't come with this automated yeah. software capability. Uh, the other ones are going to be people like uh, SkyTap, as an example, that a lot of people use and I've used in the past. That gives you a, a platform to run on, but again, a lot more cost and not the automated software capability. So there are a lot of scenarios like that that we can go after and it's almost universal. Everybody's got a need to have some sort of a test or dev environment, right? And we are going to prove to them that the software's better. So not a lot of competition. It's not like there's a zillion players no, out there. No, it's a big target, but there's <laughs> not a lot of players. And, and for, for the most part, you're going yeah. to go into scenarios where customers have something they've cobbled together that yeah. isn't working as well as they And like. Pensa AI hints a little bit of an automation piece, which is, is really hard, as people know, in the enterprise. Uh, let's talk about the technology. What's under the hood? Is there AI involved? Also, you get the domain name .a, which I love those domain names, by the way. But you know, what's the tech? What's driving the innovation and story yeah, differentiation? Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, inside, you know, it's something that you debate because, you know, that's what it is. If 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 AI is a, a way to use technology to do things as well or better than people used to do before, that's what it is. And if you take all the hype and nonsense out of the conversation, you say it's not about you know, Skynet and you know, it's computers taking over the world. It's really about doing stuff better than we can do and making people more effective. That's what we have. Now, under AI, there's a bunch of different techniques and we're going to be focused on primarily modeling and, and a core, the core IP of this is how we build the model for all of those components and how they interact and how they behave. And then machine learning. How do we apply techniques? So you're writing to software yes. that's in innovating on topology and configuration, tying that together, and then using that instrumentation to make changes and/or right. adaptive-like capability. Exactly. Policy -based but rather than go spend a month building the template mm -hmm. that you're going to go deploy, the system will build that for you, and that's where the smarts are. And we'll use machine learning techniques over time to make that model better. And so. That's kind of where we're digging, and you know, frankly, it's a big problem yeah. for people. I mean, so the, software's your main technology. It's 100% a software platform, yeah. Okay, well, Wikibon research um, was going viral at VMworld, and I'll make a note, because I think this is important, because automation is hard, it's a key point of your thing, is that Wikibon showed that about $1.5 billion is going to be taken out of the market as automation takes non 
differentiated labor out of the equation, mm -hmm. which essentially is stacking servers and racking, stacking and racking. That plays right into your trend. That's exactly what we're doing. And what we want to do and is- And by the way, that value shifts too, to other parts. Yeah, and I think we're trying to focus on, automation isn't new. It's yeah. not new in, in IT. Certainly there's been a lot of focus on it the last 10 years. The question is, how do you make the automation smarter? So you don't have to do the design and say, push play. Because yeah. the problem with automation in these really complicated mm -hmm. microservices, multi, you know, the problem is, if you automate it, if you build that template wrong, you can make the same mistake a thousand times in a row. Right, and yeah. so, I mean, I've had pro products in the past where they worked great as long as that template was correct, right? Well, yeah. what, if, what if the template changes? What if I need to put new yeah. security po policies in there, changes? Maestro is going to build it for you. That's yeah. what the, that's what the that's story product, is all that's about. That's your product name. Yep. That's well, that's what name. DevOps is all about, programming the infrastructure, and that's always going to change. So that's yep. really the DevOps ethos. Yeah, and that's why, you know, if you expand out yeah. from the first play around this test dev scenario, where frankly, we'll learn a lot. We'll learn a ton about different patterns that mm -hmm. we see. We'll learn a lot about the interop environments that customers want. I want you to add this or add that. Yeah. The system is going to get smarter to the point where when we punch it into production, yeah. it's going to know a lot more than it does today. Well, congratulations on the launch. Um, my final question for you is really the most important one, which is, if I'm a customer, why do I care? What's in it for me? What's the value? Why is, should I pay attention uh, to Pensa at .ai? What's going on? What's the value to me? Why should I care? Why should I call you? Give me, give me the bottom yeah, line. Yeah, it's about risk reduction. It's about making sure that the things you need to change, you can actually do it without it blowing up in your face. And it's also, frankly, the other side of well, the What, the AI, infrastructure blowing up in my face, well, or just apps? If you make changes to your environment and you're not sure if they're going to work, but you, you know, if you, again, take the Equifax thing. If they had made those changes and put them into their environment, they wouldn't be on the front page of every newspaper in the world. Frankly, my information wouldn't have been hacked. What would you guys have done if, you, if I was Equifax and I knew that potentially I had to move fast? How could you guys solve that problem? We have a problem, upgrade the software today. And what we would have done is given them the ability Do you think they to, knew they had a problem? Uh, I don't know if they did or not, but you can see this scenario over and over and over again in other companies where they say, we know we need to do an update, but we're not doing it. We're going to wait for six breaks months because we're scared. Scared or that breaks stuff or both? It breaks stuff and we need to test it, it. right? So yeah. our, we're going to bring test velocity into that and we're going to bring intelligence yeah. to make sure the design is right, right? So that you can do it more quickly. It's and interesting, in the old days, remember, in the old days like it was that. like patch management was a big thing. That was the, the, the on-premise software. But with DevOps, you need essentially test and dev all the time on. You do, and you know, if you're developing these applications with DevOps on the front end and you're dropping new versions of them and you know, in hours rather than you know, quarters, the infrastructure on the back end has to kind of speed up mm -hmm. to DevOps speed, and that's where we're going to focus our attention. All right, here's the hard question for you, and we'll end the segment, um, is when does a customer, your cust potential customer, know they need you? What's the environment look like? What's the pain points? What are the signals that they need to be calling Pensa.ai? What's the, what's the deal there? Yeah, I think you know, we're going to talk to, again, the DevOps people that are looking to get their applications out and get them built and deployed. And so need for application pushing, that's one. That's one. The other ones are going to be folks inside of any IT organization that need better velocity, need to be able to test, and want to take money, cost out of it, because we're mm -hmm. going to do it for a lot less than what it costs you to do it now. And the third one is the vendor community. You know, folks out there selling software, mm -hmm. VARs, you know, pre well, no, I guess people. the question is more specific. What is the the signs inside the customer that make them want to call you. Breaking, stuff's breaking, um, upgrades not happening fast enough. I'm mean, just trying to get to the, the heart of yeah, it. If I'm a customer, I don't on, necessarily on the, know. Yeah, on the IT customer side, it's all about velocity. We need to push our apps faster, we need infrastructure faster, we need to test security policies fast. We're not going fast so enough. So basically, if you're, if you're going slow and not getting the job done, yep, <laughs> yeah, they much. call you. That's our guys. All right, well, Tom, congratulations on the launch. Um, congratulations on the new CEO job. We'll be tracking you guys. Series A funded, congratulations. Who's the VC involved? We have the Fabric, which was the seed funding uh, source, and then March Capital has uh, been very helpful to us in this a round. Great, well, you, they got a great pro in you as CEO. We'll keep in touch. Uh, Cube alumni, good friend. Tom Joyce here inside the Cube Studios on the conversation around the, the launch of the company, Series A funding, new team members, and uh, pensa.ai. This is the Cube, cube.net is our URL, check it out. SiliconAngle.com and wikibon.com is where you can go check out our stuff. I'm John Furrier, thanks for watching. <laughs>